Hello, YouTubers. Reloading Bench back with you. And I should say, uh, hello, Restorers, because this is not a reloading video. This is about restoration. And uh, you'll soon see what I'm talking about. Uh, went to the store, picked up some stuff. This is my favorite wipe-on poly. And this is mineral-based wipe-on poly by Minwax. And its competitor in another big shop is the Wadco wipe-on policy. This is water-based. And I've never used the water-based version before, but I thought I'd give it a try for two reasons. One, this is now $19 for a pint, and this is $20 for twice as much, a quart. So uh, I'll probably jump online and see what the reviews are for this version of White Bomb Poly before I open it versus my uh, my go-to in either the clear gloss or the semi-gloss. Uh, but I'm running out of this, and uh, I needed more. So I was at the store buying this, and I saw this on a YouTube video because, again, uh, this project is about a piece of furniture that I'm going to restore. And uh, I'll, sh I'll flash what it is that I'm going to restore here shortly. And when I saw this, you know, I was debating, do I, you know, sand the piece of furniture all the way down to wood and then refinish? Or do I try to do this type of product, uh, which is restore finish, which goes over the existing finish? And you know what? Based on what I read and saw the reviews and the videos, I'm like, I'll give this a try. Because, worst case scenario, if this doesn't work then I will be sanding the piece of furniture. And I chose mahogany because it closely matches the finish of what's on the piece of furniture now. So enough about that. I will now flash the piece of furniture that I've been looking for for a long time. And this is called a library chair. It's also known as a banker's chair or a lawyer's chair. And they come in different varieties, some with armrests, some not with armrests, some with a, 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 uh, a cutout for a pad that's already like part of the seat. Some have a rattan seat. And these were generally made, they're still made today, but they're made cheap and chintzy. So when you see them today from places like Restoration Hardware, they're going to be expensive uh, and they're going to be, you know, basically office chair quality in terms of the pneumatics and, and the lift and whatnot. So I was looking for something really old school, literally old school, like 80 years old, old school. And uh, when you look at the prices, so go to Etsy, you know, go to Craigslist, go to eBay, go to, go to wherever, and just do a search on library chair, banker's chair, or lawyer's chair, and look at the prices. Some of them are astronomical, and some that have been restored nicely are even more astronomical. So... Uh, I've been looking, like I said, for a while, and uh, I'm a firm believer that good things come to those who wait, so I just kept looking. And I've taken that approach with just about all my hobbies, that I don't usually rush into something. Uh, I kind of know or have a gut feel if it's right, meaning if I find something and the price isn't exactly what I'm looking for, maybe a little too high for you know what I thought it would be, uh, but it's availability and scarcity or whatever the variables, sometimes I'll go for it. So in this case, these two products, so if you go out to the orange box, big box store, these two products combined cost me more than the chair. And uh, uh, I, again, right time, right place. In fact, when I found it, contacted them, they're like, oh no, somebody's coming to pick it up. I'm like, okay, you know, better luck next time. And, uh, you know, when I saw the posting still up for the following week, I'm like, hey, did this ever sell? Oh, no, they couldn't uh, couldn't pick up. They asked if they could uh, pick up next week. I'm like, well, then why didn't you reach out to me? People are weird. Uh, in any case, uh, we went back and forth on availability and uh, just happened to be over Mother's Day weekend and uh, made arrangements. It was about a 30-minute drive for me and uh, picked up the chair, uh, disassembled, as you uh, will see shortly in the video, so that it would fit in the car. And uh, there's really nothing to uh, assembling. In fact, uh, where did I put the screws? Uh, here are the screws for the bottom of the chair. And, you know, when you look at... Yeah, screws are not made like this anymore. I'm, you know, I'm sure that you could find something that's uh, very similar. Uh, so I will clean these up. Uh, make them look newish. Get rid of the mangledness. 
probably uh, re-blue them and they will be uh, good to go when I'm ready to finally reattach the bottom of that base. But uh, I needed more of this. This is getting low. I don't think I'd have enough to do the chair. Uh, and again, I'll see how this looks uh, based on reviews. And if I don't like what I see, I'll go back uh, to the other store, the Blue Box store, and pick this up. So every store seems to have different stuff. All right, that's it for now. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll break this chair restoration or reconditioning or whatever I'm going to call it into multiple videos or just one big. So we'll see how that evolves. All right, so there's the top portion. Uh, it's been refinished years ago. I will say that it was done reasonable, a little messy, not uh, not the greatest job. Uh, if I was going to restore it, I'd probably fix some of this stuff. But I think the approach I'm going to take initially is just to uh, finish it. And I'll show you the product. Actually, I'll probably film this in reverse. I'll introduce the product. And then I'll stitch the uh, the views of the of the chair in heavy duty. Uh, it's made by a company called out of Cleveland, Ohio. A company called the Marble and Shattuck Chair Company, Cleveland, Ohio, USA. So I'm going to guess uh, somewhere in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, based on uh, that company originating in late, the late 1800s. Uh, again, there's some differences, so it's definitely been worn. But uh, let me show you the other parts. All right, so this screwed into the base with just these four screws. <coughs> this probably needs the most work. I think I will, yeah, I don't know if I can take this off. If this is, this doesn't feel like it's under a whole lot of pressure, but uh, I'm thinking take it apart, clean it, <clears throat> maybe uh, buff the springs, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> uh, allergies, anything chrome, maybe buff it out and uh, obviously re-grease the, uh, the screw. I don't know if I'll repaint. I was thinking about uh, bead blasting. Not sure yet. Uh, but this one, this is the part that I think is going to take the most work in terms of uh, effort. And this is the base. So my original intent was to potentially take this apart. Uh, it's got a lot of crud and corrosion. I don't know if this comes out or if it's part of this whole one piece, but here's an example of what I meant by sloppy. Uh, I mean, these aren't even seated correctly, maybe because that was the best they could do. I mean, you can see the, the refinish, a little sloppy. Another label that was uh, painted all over or stained all over, and that was, again, the Shattuck chair. The Marble and Shattuck Chair Company, Cleveland, Ohio. I uh, was thinking about taking these out, refinishing them, but I'm not sure if that's like a screw or how that would come out. So I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure, but solid as heck. This is one heavy piece. All right, that is that is it for the the before. Of the library chair all right so this was relatively easy to get to this point um, rusty looks like the springs were I can't tell I'm gonna say black so some type of uh, bluing maybe so I will bead blast these uh, bead blast this this also this uh, and I think I'm gonna do a hammered black finish crusty grody nasty this is not the original it can't be the original excuse me can't be the original because uh the original you can tell 
this thing has worn uh, the the squareness. I'm I'm just can't believe that's that would be original. So we will grind these down to fit flush there. This will get a uh, bead blast and polish. I hammered. This is dirty, dirty. I hammered the chisel. It looked like based on which side it would go out, it would come out uh, right to left. Uh, and as hard as I hit that with a a, a, a four pound hammer and a and a uh, a large bit, uh, that didn't move. Uh, I mean, you can see where I was hitting it. So uh, this will stay in, and I will bead blast this as is. Uh, I will clean it. There's another sticker, unfortunately. So the Shattuck, Marble and Shattuck Company stickers were everywhere on the three pieces. So all original pieces, at least. Um, let me rephrase that. Most of the pieces original. And uh, yeah, I'll clean this. Uh, clean it, and uh, I will not bead blast this. I'll clean it, tape it off, I'll wire wheel it, and see what the finish looks like. And uh, that's that for now. Later. I tired. I tired. I tired. Uh, we did uh, simple green on everything just to get the gunk off and see the rust. Uh, like five things of simple green and then some wire brush so this is this screw I guess for lack of a better term this mount this whatever uh, the rest of this will get bead blasted but at least uh, I can hold it without gloves now and I'll kind of grease uh, but it will get greased up again the bolt was modified and cleaned it was nasty modified and clean and now locks in quite nicely and quite quite uh, quite flat so it looks more correct and after I blew it uh, or at least blew the head uh, I probably blew the whole thing because everything else is kind of darkish 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 these will all get bead blasted and then uh, wire brushed on the springs so I'm not going to be blast the springs these will remain uh, this natural color of uh, steel so uh, done 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 uh, I don't know when I'm going to bead blast uh, I'll probably take the uh, bottom of the chair base and hit that with the wire wheel where that gunk is uh, I'm not going to take that apart I'll uh, probably do the hammer paint by hand i've seen some some nice results from brushed hammer tone hammered look whatever you want to call it uh, as opposed to dealing with spray paint I've, I've done it with spray paint but uh there's a lot of nooks and crannies i don't know maybe i'll hold it up and uh just spray it like that i have no idea um it's too bad i'm gonna lose that I don't know if there's a way for me to take that off, spray it, and then reapply that little bit of label, but I'm not going to worry about it tonight. Okay, so we're done for now. Uh, enough progress on uh, cleaning things up and getting it looking uh, a little better. Hello, YouTubers. Reloading Bench back with you once again with a non-reloading related video. This is probably going to be attached to the chair, so uh, not a separate video, but... Uh, an update on what's going on with the chair so all of the hardware uh, is complete uh, springs were cleaned oiled I think they look great love the uh, love the original look uh, I as you remember modified this bolt so that it will sit flush I'm debating whether or not I shoot that with uh, the hammer hammered look so that's been uh, blued and uh, 
blued and oiled. Again, all the hardware was uh, bead blasted down to, I think, I'll show a picture of this because I did the bead blasting of this. This was the worst, obviously, of them because of its size and intricacies. But uh, I got them down to probably 90 plus percent bare metal uh, and then uh, shot them with the, uh, with the hammer spray, which I think came out really nice and I think we'll have a nice complimentary look of uh, old school uh, it's nice and clean all the parts again very clean and uh newish uh this particular piece uh was again bead blasted down to its white uh metal finish and it is, i decided to blue this instead of uh spraying the hammer because this particular piece mates with this and it goes in the base which and this is too big to sit on the bench uh this was sprayed and uh, i hope i don't knock anything off everything was sprayed uh cleaned and sprayed wire wheeled and sprayed down to its surface but uh this this piece sets in like this my fingers in the way it'll set in here and it will lock in via a screw that's in that cup right there in that hole so let me get this big giant piece of wood out of the way because it will knock in everything so uh, i felt that uh spraying this with the hammer tone hammered look whatever it's called uh wasn't really worth uh, the effort considering where it sits and what it does uh, in terms of the screws all of the screws were reworked reblued refinished uh, i have a really old video from a couple of years ago in fact let's see uh, that might be yeah that might be where it actually hits uh, on that giant piece of wood that i just showed you but uh all of the screws were uh this one was the most mangled and they came out pretty good uh i hammered down the tops uh to even out all of the previous years of wrong screwdriver use and abuse uh and then uh chucked them into the drill and uh, over five different sandpapers to refinish the top uh, and then blued them uh, i don't know i'm going to say these are not original screws based on you know stuff i've seen in the base of the uh of the chair uh i'm going to say they're old screws potentially and i, I could be wrong as hell i don't know anything about these things uh, interesting shape they're definitely wood screws um maybe i can find the exact same thing in the hardware store today but i'm not going to so uh and again this was this was a bit of a a challenge uh just because it's got so many different areas and angles you have to get it to to paint and then you know as you can see there's still a little bit of unfinished there that doesn't matter because it's going to constantly hit that wood or excuse me hit that metal um it goes up into the chair like this so it's a kind of a non-issue when i did uh clean and strip the bottom here i covered this area with tape as a, a bit of an homage to the original sticker so i decided to leave that completely original some people might say that's a janky stupid idea don't really care uh, and then obviously uh, this particular screw was uh, stripped wire wheeled clean and uh, functions quite nicely uh, i think it looks great in this particular finish it's natural finish as opposed to how gunky and oh, it was just nasty with all the old dried oil or whatever else was on it uh, at the time and uh, again original finish just a wire wheel nothing else done to it no bead blasting and uh, we are essentially done with all the hardware so next step is to start doing the wood restoration and i won't call that a restoration uh, i think i showed you the product earlier that i'm going to try 
have no experience with it and we'll see how that turns out um, for better or worse that's what i'm going to go with and if it turns out worse then somewhere later down the road i will strip it completely and uh, and refinish it but for now we're we're going to get this uh we're going to get this going because uh, um, everything looks pretty good i think uh, I'm, I'm liking how it turned out and uh i think it uh has a nice uh, character to it that will enhance the uh the beautiful wood and the shape of the chair so that is it for the latest chair update more to come okay gang change of plans as you will shortly see this is amazing stuff i would equate this to in the stain space because i wouldn't call it a stain the equivalent of the wipe on poly in the sense that it wipes on you don't brush it on and it's a very thin solvent based coating that you then wipe off so you know this was the wipe on and very little you know wipes off it's not like stain where very little soaks in and most of it wipes off but as the original plan was put this down on the chair rejuvenate it which when you see it i'm beyond impressed uh, and then do uh, the poly and this is a uh, water-based poly as opposed to solvent based and after doing a little more research on this uh, it is not recommended to seal this product with something like a poly but instead and because i was so impressed with the product by howard that i went and decided to go with their finish and conditioner product by howard called feed and wax and this is very similar you throw some on a on a cloth you saturate the wood rub it on let it set for 20 minutes and then uh, wipe off so we'll see uh, before and after so you'll see how this looks now uh, post restore a finish and then pre feed and wax and then post feed and wax more to come all right the sun is hiding it's a tad gloomy but this came out phenomenal in fact uh you know the weathering that was especially down the center completely gone and the color is just gorgeous but this is uh a day or so later this is set i think it, you're only supposed to uh mag uh a minimum of uh, 20 minutes before you put the wax so that's how quickly this dries and uh, again reminds me of the poly the wipe on poly but um we'll now do the wax and we'll see how this looks post wax all right so the sun is trying to come out and the wax is on and it's a light sheen not a gloss and it looks i would say quite excellent i'll get a close-up here off tripod and i went ahead and did the base as well i did not shine the copper casters of the wheels did clean the wheels though so i'll call this a reconditioning not a refinishing so if i decide to refinish i would go after uh, everything redo the entire thing get rid of the current sanding marks the imperfections make it look a little nicer but that's a little more involved and that's not a project i want to take on right now so i'll uh, go off tripod and get you a closer look so as the sun attempts to come out you can see the the sheen the shine it's very smooth i mean it's kind of like a car wax it's, you know when you wax your car it has a great smooth finish but uh yeah it just came out nice uh the whatever the chemical is in the restore finish lightened up you know i think there were some dark spots on here so it uh definitely treated the wood and uh this puppy came out nice the the tones are just gorgeous uh where he didn't fuck up the stain before but uh the wheels are all clean in terms of their gunk but uh i'll probably not shine these right now because this because i'm tired and it wasn't meant to be a huge project it was again just a recondition 
make it look nicer and I think that's been accomplished good stuff